Hi, welcome to Super Awesome Film Club, episode 32. Tonight we are going to be talking about Lever to Heaven, uh, directed by John M. Stahl from 1945. Tonight it's just me and Io, and I would like to send a shout out to Nick Thacker, our young man about town, who can no longer be with us every episode, but he will be coming back as a regular host, and we will be having some other guests as well. So tonight it is me, your host Adelaide Blair, and our movie philosopher, Io blair Freeze. Hi, Io. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I like the guns. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, tonight we're talking about Lever to Heaven. Uh, it's from 1945, directed by John Stahl, who did a lot of women's pictures, and you can definitely tell in this. Um, it stars Jean Tierney as Ellen Harland, Cornell Wilde as Richard Harlan, Jean Crane as Ruth Barrett, and Vincent Price as Russell Quentin. Okay. This is a dark story. It's a black and white, or no, it's it's not. A, it's a Technicolor movie, Technicolor. but um, it's it's a it's a film noir. Um, it's as dark as as a film noir is, and I think there's a lot of debate on whether it qualifies because it is in Technicolor, but it's a film noir. Okay, here's the story. <laughs> no debate. <So> they, <laughs> there, there's no debate. I, I don't care what people say. I, I know. Okay, so there's this dude, his name is Richard, he's on a train, he meets this hottie, her name is Ellen, and she's, he's a writer, she's reading his book, they flirt, uh, she tells him that he looks like her father, uh, and she, you know, obviously finds him attractive. Turns out they're staying at the same place, their destination is a friend's ranch. Uh, she is there to scatter her father's remains, he is there to just, I think, take a break. Uh, they fall in love. Which is interesting because she's already engaged to Vincent Price, who is not entirely happy about this. But she maneuvers the situation so that uh, Richard is, I, mean, I don't even think, he, she asks him to marry him. She tells everybody they're engaged before he's even said anything. Uh, and then she kind of maneuvers the whole situation where uh, he, you know, they're going to get married. And he goes along with it because she's pretty hot. Um, and he, you know, he'd like a piece of that, so he just go, he goes along with it. Um, and then they get married, and things seem to be going well for them. Uh, but she kind of would like more of his time. She wishes he'd spend a little less time writing. She's got a ton of money, but he's like, no, that's what I do. And then they go to visit his brother Danny. And Danny is a teenager who, they never really specifically say what's wrong with him, but I'm pretty sure he has polio. And he needs to relearn to walk again. It looks uh, like a acid paralysis to me. Io works in the polio field or the eradication thereof, so she would uh, know these sort of things. I attest to the polio possibilities. <laughs> okay. So Danny's relearning how to walk, and he really uh, idolizes his brother. And But, you know, he's been in the hospital... And uh, Ellen shows up every day, and she's really loving, until Richard invites Danny to come stay at the lake with them. And uh, she's like, no, I'm not really into that. She doesn't ever tell Richard this, though. She tells the doctor. And there's, like, there's a handyman at the lake, and then, like, Richard invites her family to the lake, and it's just all these people... And the thing about Ellen is, Ellen's a little jealous. Ellen would like to spend more time with Richard, and only Richard, and she wants to be the only thing that Richard focuses on. So up to this point, it's a pretty standard uh, woman's picture about jealousy. You know, there's a lot of drama, there's stuff going on. But about an hour into the movie, and here's where I'm going to spoil it, and we're going to spoil all sorts of stuff uh, oh, yeah. during the show. Uh, Ellen is like, yeah, Danny, let's go for a swim. Because he's getting more, he can walk a little bit, and he's been swimming. She's like, yeah, let's go for a swim. So she's in the rowboat, and she's, he's like, yeah, tell me where to go so I, you know, I don't get lost in the water and stuff. She exhausts him and then watches him drown. Now, a lot of people say she lets him die. Ah, uh, she drives him to his death. And, but, you know, she, of course, pretends it was an accident. Uh... She, of course, Richard is distraught, and she and him, rather than, so she does it because she wants to spend time alone with him, 
But what happens is he can't bear to be there anymore. So they end up going living with her mother and her cousin, uh, her cousin uh, being Ruth, played by Jean Crane. And then, so she's, you know, once again surrounded by total, totally surrounded by people, freaking out, totally jealous. And her cousin is all like, yeah, he'd love a baby. So she's like, yeah, I'll get pregnant. Oh, I don't like being pregnant. So she uh, gives herself a miscarriage. And then, um, yeah, she throws herself down the stairs. And then she realizes, or she suspects, whether it's true or not, that Richard is in love with her cousin Ruth, so she decides that she's going to poison herself and then make everything look like Ruth killed her, and then it, you know, it, it just goes. She does it, and Ruth gets blamed for it, and then there's probably the craziest ass trial scene of all time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Vincent Price. Uh, who was Ru or not or was Ellen's former fiance also happens to be a district attorney and uh, he is is the most dramatic lawyer in the history of the world <laughs> and of course nobody says anything he just they're like yeah okay that's cool uh, and then stuff happens um, and then the movie ends and people are either happy or sad Io, what did you think of this movie so I looked at this movie as, as bringing up a lot of like real ethical questions. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you about one point. So when she and Danny are in the lake and they're swimming together, um, there's the great ethical debate over whether killing, you know, is worse than letting die or if they're kind of on the same equal field or if they should be treated, you know, completely differently. And, you know, like I didn't see this as a question so much as if, you know, it's worse to kill or let die, because she exhausted him. She yeah. was responsible for his death. But it still, like, it brought that question up, and, and I found that very interesting. And then also when she miscarriages, when she throws herself down the stairs, um, I saw that, you know, it's it's funny looking at it now. So in the 1940s, abortion was illegal. Yes. And, you know, there wasn't really a question over whether or not that was life inside of her. Um, and now, you know, looking at it from a modern viewpoint, it's, it's hard for me because, you know, I wouldn't consider if she had, like, a medical abortion for it to be a killing situation, but what the drama that they play in play it in is mm -hmm. very like, killing. Like she looks like an evil kind of devil woman, um, killing this child in that scene. And you know, finally, what do we do with a sick person? You know, like obviously Ellen is very sick, and Richard doesn't know what to do with her, and he seems very glad that she poisoned herself, and her family seems very glad that she poisoned herself. Like. It brings up the idea, like, is it okay to, you know, the death sentence, give the death sentence to somebody who, you know, has killed one, maybe two children? Um, is it okay to wish her dead and to be glad that she took the poison? Like, what do you do in a situation where a loved one is a killer? Yeah, so that's really interesting, because if you contrast her character with the character she plays in Laura... Yeah. Uh, Jean Tierney, the actress. So Laura is seemingly a great person, but really kind of isn't. She's Where, problematic. Yeah, she's a problematic character. I mean, well, she's a really interesting character, but as a person, she's, you know, she's kind of a user. I, I don't, I don't, I love the movie Laura. I don't care for the character Laura. Like, I think she's kind of <laughs> sketchy. Um, whereas with Ellen, she's obviously mentally ill. Like, there are allusions in this with her to her obsession with her father. Mm -hmm. And did she drive him to his death? Is, I think, an accusation made. I don't know if he killed himself or... But somebody... At some point in the movie, somebody makes a reference to her. He was just trying to get away from her because she was really obsessed with her father and then becomes very obsessed with Richard, who... Who looks, um, like, her who, who looks like her father. So she is obviously mentally ill and but she's portrayed as evil yeah and 
you know, I think, I don't think that characterization would fly anymore, you know, because I think it's so obvious, you know, like whether you go with the Freudian Oedipus complex or whatever, there's obviously something going down with this girl who, she needs help. Yeah. And in responding to the miscarriage, like that's, you know, abortion was illegal and there were ways to get that, but I, you can tell, you know that she could have pursued an illegal abortion, but having a miscarriage uh, suited her needs more. Mm -hmm. Like, and um, one of the things that I'm going to talk about a little bit, well, let's just talk about it now, um, <laughs> is, you know, so how much of what is she doing her trying to control her environment. Like right. she, I mean, keeping in mind, she's a total nutbag. Um, but, you know, with Richard keeps inviting people over. Like she, <laughs> like for her mental state, she wants his attention. And he keeps bringing her family over and her brother over and the handyman lives there. And she's just like, I just want to spend some time with you. And yeah. who knows if he had respected that, if things could have been dealt with in a different way. Like, he probably never found out she was crazy, psycho, polio, teenage killing, miscarriage, having suicide, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't, I'm not trying to defend her, but, you know, it's the 40s. She doesn't have a lot of options as to things that she can pursue. And then about mental illness, and they're not, they couldn't understand where any of that could be coming from. Well, yeah, and her family has known for quite some time that she's a controlling, jealous freak, um, because the cousin is actually her adopted sister, but who is her cousin, who uh, refers to herself as belonging to uh, Mrs. Barrett and not Mr. Barrett, because Mr. Barrett so obviously belonged to Ellen. Mm -hmm. and that they know she's possessive. But at no point does anybody try to help her or help the situation. They just kind of sit back and watch her. And the Vincent Price character, I think he knows that she's a nutbag, and he still loves her. Yeah. He seems to be the, the good guy to me in the story, the one character who's consistently, like, attentive is Vincent Price. Yeah, um, just to, because I haven't talked about, I really love this movie. Um, and it's it's not as much of a classic as, say, Laura is, because Laura is a very well put together movie. But I think it it's a subversive little film, because it's so obviously playing on all of the tropes from the women's pictures, you know. There's rival, sisterly rivalry and jealousy, and you think it's going in one direction, and then it takes a very drastic turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if you're not prepared for it, it's like, what did she just do? Yeah. Um, but I would like to talk about the courtroom scene, <laughs> <laughs> where Vincent Price is just completely over the top, freaking out. And then, so here's how, here's another total spoiler. Um, if you don't want to know how this film ends, you should stop now. Go watch the movie and come back. Um, so they have, Ruth is like, you did this, you were jealous, you were in love with Richard. And Ruth's like, yes, I am in love with Richard. And then Richard gets on the stand and he's all like, yeah, but Ellen was a crazy person who killed my brother and did the miscarriage and she committed suicide. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, he's got no evidence, he's got no proof, but the ending is that he goes to jail for two years because he didn't tell anybody that Ellen was a psycho bitch who was killing people. Yeah. So I'd like to say that of all the possible plot holes <laughs> in this movie, and there are a lot, uh, that to me was the hardest one to get past. Was like, oh yeah, she's a killer. I don't have any proof, but you know, the courtroom scene was so over dramatic. It was hard to buy really the entire thing. Um, but I do want to make like one judgment very clear, and that is, I don't think you know, like I don't know that I think that everything that Laura did was wrong as much as like Laura or Ellen. 
or sorry, Ellen. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking of the last movie. Um, I don't want to say that what she did was wrong because she was mentally ill, but I think that cheating with your wife's sister is totally wrong. Well, like, I don't think they actually. It's not gonna pass for me. Okay, so I don't. They didn't do anything though. Mm, he was having an emotional affair with his okay. sister. That's a valid point. That's about like he should have been all like Ellen, you suck. I'm um, yeah. He he definitely could have been more upfront with his feelings. I will I will grant you that 100. percent However, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, uh, committing suicide and then framing your sister is maybe uh, a slight overreaction. Your sister cousin, if you will. So yeah. Oh, and there's one other thing I would like to say. Uh, what is up with Cornell Wilde's makeup? Oh yeah, the Technicolor in this is beautiful, except you can see like the cake makeup and like it's space. And it's yeah, and it's specific to Cornell Wilde. He's got like he's got more makeup than the rest of the cast combined. Yeah, it's crazy. And I mean, I love this film, and it's gorgeous, and it's gorgeous deadly, but. His makeup is out of control. Maybe he had like some crazy dragon tattoo on his face. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Or some Maori tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. But I don't think it's true, but you never know. Yeah. Um, I might have to research that. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I've said all that I have to say. Is there anything else that you would like to say before we go? Um, watch this movie, uh, but not if you're in a really terrible mood. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe if you are in a really terrible mood, this might be a way to, you know, uh, deal with those emotions in a positive manner. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we will be back in two weeks with our special guest, Ben Nason, who um, has been on before, I think in our first season, and we will be starting a four-part series on Ken Russell, and we will be talking about The Devils, uh, which I'm going to propose is the best movie ever made, but we'll, we'll talk about that next week. Okay. Uh, watch the skies, everybody, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Watch the skies. <laughs>